Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to give you some tips on how I improve my lisp and my stuttering. Hey, so disclaimer, I do not have a master's in speech pathology. I'm just talking about my experience and some stuff that I learned and that I've been learning. So first tip is the placement of articulation, the placement of your tongue. There are two kinds of lisp, a frontal lisp and a lateral lisp. I'm going to be talking about more from the frontal lisp side because that's why I struggle. <laughs> yeah, I still struggle with the most, um, but specifically says, zas, and shas. Those three killed me throughout my years, my childhood, bro. They did. <laughs> so some tips on that is to know the proper placement of your tongue because typically your tongue protrudes either between or in front of your tongue and it'll create a th sound. So if I want to say sand, I'll sometimes end up saying fan. If you really know the placement or where to place your tongue when you're saying this letter, this segment, then it'll be a lot easier. So when you know the, where to place your tongue when you're saying the segment, it'll help out a lot and just it will be a great base for you to grow out your list. My second tip is to practice in the mirror. So when you're practicing in the mirror and you're practicing your says or your zas or even your shas, you can see where your tongue is placed. Or you can remember that when you're doing says and zas, you want to do a bite smile type of thing. So when you're doing or zzz, because sometimes if you do or zzz, it can be, <laughs> I don't know what that was. As you can see, it just makes it easier to say says and zas when you're doing this big smile because you can easily place your tongue where it needs to be. But for if you do it with your lip rounded, it can be easier, I guess, for the tongue to protrude. For your shas, it's actually the opposite. You don't want to necessarily go sha because that could create this type of lateral lisp. So you want your lips to be rounded and you want to go sha. So if you practice those two in front of the mirror, it will be easier for you to remember, okay, I need to make sure my lip is rounded when I do sha instead of sha. Or, you know, when you're doing your says or does, it doesn't have to be, or it shouldn't be rounded. It should be in kind of a smile, like sa or sa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So for my third tip, it is to slow down. And it fits in with stuttering too. And I get it. I know. You're like, girl, I by accidentally clicked on your video for you to tell me to slow down. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> but two times, uh, studying occurs just because we're speaking so fast. <laughs> so uh, what you want to do is slow down your speech, slow down your words. The people can wait. <laughs> they can wait. You're good. Keep it slow. Take your time because when you're doing that, you and your brain can have this nice conversation. Be like, okay, remember, we got to place our tongues this way. Make sure our lips aren't rounded when we're saying this segment. It's just a really good teamwork. A little thing that I notice that occurs for me is that I'm so precise and I'm so keen on saying my words clearly that I end up saying, I end up like inflecting some words, like the tone of it, some like even the letters is higher <laughs> than others. Um, I don't know if that happens to any other people, I but I notice that for myself when I'm slowing down and um, yeah, so if that happens to you, too, please let me know I'm not alone. <laughs> it, it probably happens to other people, but uh, that's something I noticed when I started to practice slowing down a lot. It's that I'm just keen on having it to be perfect, that it just, it create my own accent. <laughs> yeah. My final, my final and last one is to read out loud. Practicing reading out loud can help a lot. It's the same way when you're practicing your just one segment in front of the mirror. How about you just practice a couple words? You know, um, just a line a day might keep the lisp away. <laughs> Ooh. Did she do that? Yeah. <laughs> you can be practicing, maybe just saying two lines then, especially with words that are, have been really troublesome with you and frustrating, then I think that'll help a lot. You know, I was thinking, I just thought of like tongue twisters. I don't necessarily know if those will really help because those are just meant to make you mess up. <laughs> so I would, maybe I wouldn't suggest tongue twisters, but just, you know, write a couple, write a sentence with a couple words that have been troubling for you and practice it and say it out loud. You know, you're at home, it's okay. So for my backstory, uh, usually a child has a lisp until they're four or five, and then afterwards, it just, it would gradually go away. But for me, um, after five, I still had a lisp. <laughs> I, was, I was one of those kids, I was one of those kids that still had it. And um, my kindergarten teacher told my parents like, hey, 
I don't understand what your kid is saying. I don't know what she's saying at all. She needs help, you know, in a nicer way, of course, in a nicer way, I think. And so I'm a speech therapist, a speech pathologist. You can, they're both the same thing. <laughs> I just mix it up sometimes. And I had a speech pathologist for about seven years until I reached high school and they just threw me into the wolves and good luck. <laughs> So, which is okay, I was fine, I think I was fine. So I had speech therapist since I was six. Um, to give you a little summary of how it runs down was that your teacher would get a call <laughs> and be like, hey, can you send this girl, this, you know, Bethany to this room? The teacher sends me down and some kids in the class are like, oh, oh, where are you going? And I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> and it wasn't because I was afraid. I think I just found it cool to be like called out boss. Like who, who wouldn't it be, right? At that age too, I was like, yeah, yeah, bye. So I had uh, to go to the speech therapist and it was just the, it'll be in like a little small room and sometimes you won't be alone. There'll be, there's plenty of other kids that have speech impediments, like you're never alone. So I usually had this other uh, person with me and we would work together and the speech therapist will help us out and she struggled more with stuttering and I struggled more with lisp but we would still make sure that we were good on both parts and sometimes I would say that there would be two to three kids in a room um that was for me I, yeah the highest for me like was like three kids in a room maybe four but yeah typically the speech therapist is just working on like with two kids or three mm -hmm. <laughs> so by the time I reached middle school that's when I started to take things seriously because it, I, I started to notice how complicated or just a little bit frustrating it was to always repeat myself or uh, just the less the less being evident and you know so I started to actually do the practices that the speech therapist would uh, make me bring home um, and all those things and they would have like a little it's a little form and you give it to your parents to show them speech therapist just wrote on like what we worked on today you know we worked on saying these words in practice you know and we suggest her practicing this as well until the next time you see her and i would say that as my years gone by i started to see my speech therapist less so I would say I started to see a speech therapist maybe once every two weeks um, and then by the time I was like almost done middle school I it was like once a month um, sometimes I would be surprised that's the thing I, I, I never knew <laughs> when the speech therapist would show up <laughs> I just yeah I never knew you know she'll just pop up whenever and be like hey guys I'm trying to fix up that speech and be like okay so yeah you never knew when your speech therapist was coming but it was fine with me uh, and yeah, and then by high school, um, I was I was done. I was I was done with speech therapy, and I I would say that yeah, she she helped out. They well, I basically had two <laughs> speech therapists within those seven years. I, I would just think because I switched over to a new school or just the way how their their work work goes. But yeah, I would say that those speech therapists definitely helped out a lot, it's, especially for me going to high school, which is a whole new chapter in my life. So uh, that helped out a lot, but you know, my list still does occur every now and then, even until now, it still does. Um, another thing I would say that helped out a lot was doing drama. I did drama throughout my childhood, but specifically in high school, you would get many lines <laughs> sometimes and you know, you have to speak out loud, you have to articulate, oh, you have to articulate. I'm telling you, the amount of times the director slash just the teacher would tell me to speak just like speak clearly or to articulate in front of everyone and girl like <laughs> man <laughs> I'm a cancer so you can feel ways sometimes you know but it wasn't like I did it on purpose it was just sometimes such a struggle to say these couple words you know in a line together in this type of emotion and, and articulate it may have been a struggle but it was a struggle that I needed to, to improve on my speech. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> that I knew that it, it definitely helped me out a lot and I see where I am today and I just think back to how I spoke back when I was a kid and all these things did definitely help me improve. If you have a lisp and you love it, don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong. These are just little tips on how I improve my speech, but I don't think my lisp will ever go away. I don't know if even people can tell I have it. I know there's some words where I can hear the S just struggling. 
struggling to be clear <laughs> but um I, I, I try my best <laughs> you know I it'll, it'll always kind of be there but I definitely know that I improved and as well with my stuttering <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> I really hope this helped out. Um, please let me know if it did. Feel free to share, give it a like, and subscribe. Uh, the music you hear in the background is coming from this girl, so please go on my SoundCloud, check out some tunes so you can bump to. And I have many projects coming up, so again, subscribe! And I'll see you next time, so stay safe. Bye! Hey, welcome. Hi, welcome to back. Okay. <laughs>